Welcome to this episode of the Structural Engineering Channel, a podcast focused on helping structural engineering professionals stay up to date on technical trends in the field and to help them to succeed in their careers and lives. In this episode, we'll be talking with Krista Luza, a licensed structural engineer and principal at Bueller, a structural engineering firm with multiple offices in the Western United States, about how her involvement in the Structural Engineering Association of California, also known as SEAC, has supported her career path and professional development and how it can help you too. I am your co-host, Rachel Holland. And I'm your co-host, Matt Picardle. Now let's jump to our conversation of the week with Krista. Welcome to the show. We are delighted to have you with us today. Can you briefly introduce yourself and let the listeners know what you do on a daily basis? Sure. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so I'm a principal at Bueller. Um, we're headquartered up in Sacramento, and I have been at Bueller since I graduated from Cal Poly in 2004. Um, at Bueller, uh, most of my time is spent managing projects, which I love doing. It gives me a chance to work with clients and our engineers and teaching them, training them, helping them, answering questions, doing a little detailing once in a while still. Um, So that's a big portion of my day-to-day. I'm also really involved in creating or helping to create and lead our training, in-house training program um, for new hires, as well as our mentorship program. And I'm heavily involved in hiring and recruiting for all of our offices, um, primarily our California offices. Yeah, thanks, Krista. I know I, I first uh, got to see you at the SEOC uh, convention this year. And so uh, I believe you're the incoming president or already the, the president for SEOC. And mm-hmm. uh, I remember you giving us a presentation about your career path and whatnot. So. I know you've been heavily involved in uh, SEOC since uh, college and you've been on various committees. Uh, So can you tell us more about your involvement in that and what that has to offer to structural engineers that they may not know about if, you know, if they're not involved in these uh, organizations? Sure, sure. I'll try to give you the abbreviated list Um, (laughs) because I have been involved with SEOC for probably over 20 years. Um, It did start at college and I, First, we were lucky to have a student chapter there, and I quickly volunteered to organize um, Structural Forum, which was a really great leadership opportunity for me. Um, And then when I started at Bueller and came to Sacramento to start my career, um, I got plugged in with SEAC here. And at the time, the SEAC Central President worked here at Bueller, and she said, you know, you'd make a great YMF chair. Why don't you do that? I said, Okay, <laughs> so I very quickly got thrust into um, the YMF committee, which I very much enjoyed. It was basically having fun, you know, creating fun ac- activities for young engineers to get together. So that was easy and wonderful introduction to SEOC. Um, from there, I moved into SEOC Central Board, um, eventually became the in the leadership track uh, president, um, which came with a stint on the SEOC State Board. That's where I started to learn how the Seahawks state board level worked. Um, And of course, as you mentioned, now I am the president of Seahawks state, which has been an incredible opportunity. We have an incredible board, which the board is made up from leadership of all the four MOs and what an amazing team we have. So I'm very blessed um, to be a part of that. Um, On the committee side, I've been really involved at the Seahawks central SE3 committee, which is structural engineering engagement and equity. And I'm the current chair of the SEOC Statewide Career Fair Committee, which we're hosting our very first ever statewide career fair in February. So I'm super excited about that. So what does SEOC have to offer? Why should people get involved? Um, It's just such a great place to develop yourself professionally. Um, Not every firm can be everything to everybody. And I feel like SEOC does a great job of filling those gaps, right? And so if I wanted extra education or leadership training or communications opportunities, I'd go get those at SEOC. Um, Plus, it's just an amazing community. I've met folks like you and have just built friendships up and down the state with engineers all over. It, it's been an incredible community to be a part of. Yeah, and I, I know, uh, just to add on to that, it's that's one of the things that I've seen, uh, you know, talking to a, a lot of different professionals in the structural engineering industry, uh, luckily through this podcast, 
I mean, that's one of the things that uh, always seems to be a recurring uh, key to success, getting involved in, in these types of organizations, uh, giving back. And like you said, it, it is a community. I think for us as structural engineers, um, we're all going through the same things and uh, someone or someone has, and you know, you're not, not alone. We all, we all have our ups and downs. So having that type of community around us, it, it can offer some inspiration or some guidance or some mentorship uh, like a lot of these programs are doing. So yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, your, your involvement in Krista has always been super inspirational to me. I love that you you have this dedication towards it. Um, how have how has your experience in these like all of these experiences and your different roles and you've obviously had so many different roles in SEAC and um how has it helped to support your professional development well how much time do we have um, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean in so many ways right I mean SEAC is an opportunity to get technical education right um, so there's only so much time in the day and I can't spend all my day at work studying. So go to SEAC, join a webinar, join a, go to a dinner meeting, right? Whatever, learn, 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 learn. Um, but more importantly, it is where I have learned communication skills. It is where I've learned leadership skills. It is where I have learned that I'm not alone, as you mentioned a moment ago, Matt, that, you know, if I feel like I'm, I'm the only one experiencing this hard time in my career, then I go to SEAC and go, oh, it's normal. Everything's going to be fine. It just keep going. Right. Um, so it has provided just that, that comfort and that peace that, you know, I'm on the right track and everything is going to be great and, and I'm doing what I love and I just got to keep going. So I cannot stress enough the, the professional development opportunity at SEAC for folks. And you don't have to lead a committee. You don't have to be a SEAC president, right? Just go and engage, be a part of the community, um, build those relationships. Our industry is so very much an industry-based or a relationship-based industry. And those people don't show up at your desk. Those people don't show up at your home. They show up at SEAC. They show up at industry events. They show up at, you know, BD events and things like that. So getting out and getting engaged is so critical into your development as a professional. That's where I go to get it. So, <laughs> And uh, I know this is something that I've asked, but I, I know, I think a, a lot of maybe engineers that don't, aren't involved, they, I think they would probably ask, well, how do I get involved? Is it just going to a committee, just showing up at the meetings? Um, how, yeah, because I think it's really intimidating for, I don't know, a, a newer engineer that's never been involved with the community. Okay. How do I get involved? Do I just, yeah, show up to the meetings or become a committee member? Uh, how do I become a committee member? I don't know anything about concrete or it's not my expertise. Or <laughs> I think I know, at least for me, that's something that passed through my mind when um, early on in my career, I wanted to see what your take on that was in terms of how to get involved. So yes, the answer is yes. All of those things. Yes. Just pick one, right? Sounds so easy, but it's really a matter of what you're interested in, what you're passionate about, right? Are you, you're really into seismic design? You're really into really complicated technical subjects? Join the seismology committee. Um, you feel like you're the only one in your company or in the industry based on whatever experience you're having? Go to an SC3 committee meeting, right? Show up. Show up at whatever topic you're interested and passionate about. There's no point in investing your energy into things you're not excited about or interested in, right? Like you won't show up again. Go where you're interested. You like working with students? Oh my gosh. I love interfacing with the students. If you need an infusion of energy and passion into your life, go to a student event. You come back going, oh yeah, I remember why I do my job. Like I do love this. You know, their their enthusiasm is infectious. So go what go wherever the topic interests you. And it doesn't have to be a leadership position, although it's very easy to end up there. <laughs> you show up and you just sit in the back and then pretty soon you're sitting in the front and then pretty soon you're raising your hand and then pretty soon you're running the committee. So um, careful. <laughs> but the answer is just, just go where things interest you, you know, and folks say, well, I don't want to spend my personal time at SEAC. I'm like, okay, that's great. What does interest you? Does volunteering for your church interest you? 
go there. You as an engineer can influence your community based on your skills and your knowledge wherever you go. It doesn't have to be SEAC. You know, volunteer at SBCA. You're passionate about animals? Show up. You'd be surprised how much whatever you know as an engineer can influence that community too. So, um, of course, I'm a big proponent of the engineering community, so I highly recommend you show up at SEAC, but it's really just about following your passions and what you're interested in. Uh, good job following your passions. I'm always, like I said, I'm always inspired by how involved you get. And uh, I think it's really, uh, I, I really admire it. So one question for you that I have in regards to your involvement in SEAC, how has that been? Um, how has your experience been as a female uh, engineering leader in the SEAC community? That's a great question. It's been great, honestly. <laughs> um, like I mentioned earlier, SEAC is great at filling those gaps, right? So I may not have always had a female role model at my firm um, over, over the years, but I could find those female role models at SEAC. And, you know, so if I'd never left my office or I never left my desk, I would just say, well, maybe women don't belong in leadership. Maybe women don't have opportunities to lead. Um, and by going out to SEAC and seeing other women be leaders made me realize I can I can do that. I can lend what I have to offer to this profession, to my firm, all of those things. And so it has been an, an amazing experience as a female leader. I just, I really feel like there's nothing different or special about it um, other than the community that I may not have in other areas of my life. I find it at, at SEAC. Um, there have been some amazing women in this profession that have, that go before me, Kelly Cobeen. Marianne Phipps, they don't work together. They don't work with me, but I can see them at SEAC. I connect with them. I can learn from them. I can ask for their advice. Um, you know, they've gone before me and charted those paths and I can see myself following in their footsteps and following their example. Um, and as such, I hope I can be that for the next generation of young female engineers to continue that demonstration that you can do it. Just keep showing up. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's so important too. It's it's um it's so important to see, I guess, yourself in whatever you're you're striving to do, even though it might be unconscious. But you know, if you don't see anyone that's similar to you, uh, in I guess in your industry, then I think it subconsciously it kind of demotivates you. But when when you see someone, it's like, oh, they did it. Uh, I can do it. I think that's why social media and being in the leadership position uh, or being in a position where you can be seen uh, by younger students and even professionals. I think it's it's uh, super important, I think, especially now because, uh, you know, we're on our computers and our phones all the time. So I don't know, brainwashing like, oh, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's an engineer. You know, it's, right. it's things like that. It's uh, being out there in front of a public and students so they can see what structural engineers are and and that it can be a path for them if they choose. I think that's true of any group, right? You can you could go into any office or any organization and say, okay, I'm the only one X here, right? And so to your point, Matt, that you can show up at Seahawk, you can show up online, you can show up on a webinar or watch a podcast and you can say, oh, I identify with that person or that person. Um, in this industry, they exist and there's comfort there. And I think that's um, one of maybe the benefits coming out of COVID is that our um, that visual exposure to the diversity of our profession and our state and our, <laughs> our industry is really much more visible than it ever was before and much more accessible for our younger engineers. So that's, that's really exciting. Um, so we got something good. I think it's also being talked about too, which is another thing to just keep it moving forward. Very much. Yeah, absolutely. Much so. And uh, Krista, you've also been, I, and maybe you kind of mentioned this with the uh, working with the, the younger kids. Uh, you've been involved in the ACE uh, mentor program uh, where you uh, mentor younger engineers. Uh, what Could you explain that program a little bit and uh, how you got involved with it, in it and how it's helped you in your career? Yeah, you'll notice some trends here of things I'm passionate about, <laughs> training, mentorship, students, right? It took many years to start to realize that there, these themes existed in my career. Um, so when I first got involved with the ACE um, here in Sacramento, it's called CREATE um, Mentorship Program. It was purely selfish. 
I'm this young engineer and I'm pretty sure I need communication skills that I wasn't taught in college. And where am I going to get those? So I thought, ooh, this high school students don't know if I'm wrong. So I will go mentor and present in front of them and tell them a little about engineering. And if I'm wrong, they won't know, right? If I show up to a Seahawk convention and I'm wrong, I will get called out. So, you know, it was a very friendly place for me to start practicing my um, communication and present presentation skills if you will. And then it very quickly evolved into an opportunity for more leadership skills to move onto the board and, and to help organize and things like that. And then as I started to recognize these patterns in my interests, I realized that I really enjoyed the mentorship aspect of it. Eventually I got there. Um, so I really do enjoy working with those people that are just bright eyed and bushy tailed and looking for a path. And if they're interested in our path, I can show them the way and give them advice. And that has been a kind of a theme throughout my career since I um, created a mentorship program at Bueller and, you know, anything mentorship related at Seahawk, I got to plug in and participate in. Um, it's just a great way to give back and also to further our profession. Um, I do worry about the future of our profession. I think the numbers are declining. The interest in our profession are declining. Um, enrollment in engineering majors is declining. There's a lot of great opportunities out there for people. And sometimes structural engineering gets missed along the way. And it's a tough profession. You know, it's very technical and it's deadline driven. And I, I worry about that future. And so if I can sh go out and show folks, this is how you navigate and how you can be successful in this career. And it can be extremely rewarding. Um, I am more than happy to do that. And I think we all have to, we have to, if we want our profession to survive. Yeah, that's I, I, the ACE mentor program. I've not gotten involved in that one, but I've been involved in other ones. And uh, working with the younger students is always it's great to spread kind of like the information of what we do. Cause I mean, going into college, I didn't really know what, what it was that I even really signed up for. And so sharing that information to them and like giving them some insight and then also like helping to like inspire them and see the good things. So they want to continue forward. It's always, it's, it makes me feel good too. So Krista, I mean, clearly you're just, you're, you're a you're a busy woman. You've got all these like things happening outside of work. You still have your job. And when there's so much to focus on each day, how, I mean, how do you decide what, what to work on and how do you still maintain sort of like a healthy work-life balance? Hmm. Work-life balance. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, so if you ask any engineer and I'm sure you two are the same, I'm a list maker. Right. Um, and I think the difference may be with my list than maybe somebody else's list and my calendar is everything goes on it. Seahawk goes on it. My personal life goes on it. My work stuff goes on it because it all has to be a priority. And so if I only do my work list, then pretty soon I'm like, oh yeah, I was supposed to call my dad or, oh yeah, I was supposed to show up at a dinner tonight with my family or, oh yeah, I had a dentist appointment. It all goes into the same place. It's all integrated. It's all part of my daily life. And if I have to take care of personal business, I take care of it. If I have to take care of Seahawk business, I take care of it. Um, so along with any list goes a priorities, right? So what should I be doing today? What should I at least get done this week? Um, what can get done next week? The bottom of this week's list ends up at the text top of next week's list, right? Um, and I think a lot of us function that way, but the more involvement that you have, it's it just becomes so much more critical um, to constantly be writing things down and to set your priorities. Um, I think another key is I do raise this a lot. I, yes, I will do that. Yes, I will do that. And so I need to kind of sit on it once in a while and hold it down, but I am learning to qualify my yeses and my volunteers that yes, I will help in that aspect, whether it's on the board or lead a committee or engage if I can have a co-chair if it means I will do one task and not be the leader, right? I can lead this. That means I can't lead that, but I can help. And so I qualify a lot of my engagement so that I can very clearly set expectations of, of how much I can contribute so that nobody gets left disappointed in, in the level of my engagement. Um, and that, again, comes to a priority list of if I want to lead something that's going to be, I'm going to set a priority. I want to lead this thing. 
but I can help with this other thing. And so I, I feel like that's really critical. Um, the other thing I would say is having an amazing support network. I have some amazing friends. I have some amazing partners at work and I have an amazing partner at home who all support me in what I do, will listen if I'm having a hard time, help me readjust those priorities if they're off a bit. Um, and there's nobody in my life that tells me you shouldn't, you can't, you, sh you, you need to stop. Everybody in my life tells me, keep it up. You're on the right path. You love what you do. Don't stop. Sometimes there's just a little bit of this, like, hey, your priorities are a little out of whack. Hey, maybe you need to reevaluate. Hey, maybe you need to take some time um, here or there to be able to readjust. So I, I have an amazing team around me that keeps me sane. So highly recommend finding those people in your life and pulling them close. Krista, you also mentioned, I, I know you mentioned this a lot, and I know you're really passionate about it, the, the mentorship and the training aspects of, I guess, in, in structural engineering. Um, could you go a little bit more into your philosophy about those on what even made you want to start mentoring or maybe some of the challenges? So I think that's one of the issues too in the structural engineering industry, right? I think there's a lot of things that uh, maybe students don't know when they first get into the industry. Um, and then when they, they come in, it's, I know sometimes it may be a sink or swim type of uh, environment, uh, maybe at times, but I guess what's your philosophy on that and how can uh, engineers better train or help uh, newer engineers coming into the industry? That's a tough question, Matt. That wasn't on the list. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, was, that was my selfish question. <laughs> I think it's it's really about transparency. I feel like there's a bit of a lack of transparency at times. Um, and I also feel like there's a lack of communication. I'm a huge proponent of communicate, communicate, communicate. So many bad things happen when communication fails. Um, you come into a new firm, you sit down and, you know, you just get work thrown at you, you, get a little bit of training and folks get busy and they don't remember to tell those young engineers, we're not expecting you to be a superstar day one. We're not expecting you to knock that 10 story building out of the park day one. Let's start with the, the restroom building, right? Um, I think we forget to communicate that to folks sometimes. And I feel like it is natural in our industry as engineers, we have these personality types where we hold ourselves to a very high standard. Uh, we have very high expectations of ourselves and we apply a lot of pressure on ourselves. So a young engineer comes in and they're expecting to be everything to everybody. And there's no way anybody expects that, but we forgot, we forget to tell people. And I, I think that's really important that managers and leadership need to tell people, take time to communicate what their expectations are and to listen, right? And to provide an environment where people understand, you know, it's okay if you don't know everything because we don't expect you to. Um, again, that, that really does feed into mentorship because I believe a lot of what mentorship is, is just listening, right? And communicating and just being a listening ear and, and offering some advice once in a while or helping people find the resources they need to be successful, right? If I'm your mentor, I don't have to solve your problems, but maybe I know somebody who can provide you that training that you need or somebody who has, uh, that's a good resource for you to reach out to. Rachel, I have sent people to Rachel. I know somebody in this industry that can give you advice. I'm going to connect you, right? And it just takes a few extra minutes out of your day, out of your week to provide that for somebody. And, you know, I, I've never been part of a formal mentorship program. Um, as I was coming up, I always went out and got my mentorship, <laughs> right? Um, but not everybody has that personality to be like, hey, I need help. I need communication. Talk to me. Um, and so we all have to kind of remember to be that for everybody to keep to keep this profession going. And Krista, a follow-up question on that. Um, this is also not on the script. So, <laughs> um, but didn't you sort of like implement something in at Bueller that sort of is, I know you, you mentioned like the training and stuff like that, but did you sort of implement like a, a mentorship program or can you, how, how did you do that? I mean, maybe maybe other firms are interested in doing something like that. What, what did you do? 
Yeah, no, that's a great question. We did. Um, so I really led that effort, but we do have a committee that um, makes it happen. So I really felt strongly about this concept that some of us go out and get the mentorship we need. And as I grow as an engineer over time, my mentorship needs change. And so I go and I change my mentorship pool as I grow. But I kept seeing young engineers or my peers that were leaving the firm or leaving the industry. And I was like, wow, they're not getting the support they need. So here at Bueller, we talked about, let's create a program that's formalized for the folks who aren't going to go out and knock on doors and get the, the help they need and the support they need. Let's make sure that we're supporting them. So it's, it's not technical training. It's not problem solving. It's purely mentorship, career communication based mentorship. So annually we pair people up. They'll never get paired with their supervisor, um, preferably not with PMs that they're already working with and just try to maybe work across offices, right? Pair people up across offices so they can get a different perspective. And we encourage the mentee to show up with, with things they wanna talk about. Maybe they wanna learn how to get into business development or maybe they wanna learn how to get involved in SEOC call me. Um, maybe they want to get involved in um, our in-house education, right? And they don't know where to go. Or maybe they're having a hard time communicating with their supervisor and they're butting heads or they're, they're struggling and they can ask for advice on how to deal with those challenges. And so we created that program and it just rotates every year, automatic repairing every year. And again, it's just, it's just purely um, career-based mentorship. And it's been really successful. Do you get to a point where you're like experienced enough where like they switch you now you're a mentor? Like, how does that, um, people kind of self-volunteer if I want to be okay. a mentee, a mentor or both. Okay. For example, so I've been at Bueller for 18 years. And so I often act in a mentor role, but I also need mentorship. And so if say our president or our vice president are willing to be mentors that year, then I'm like, Hey, right. So <laughs> now granted, I don't, you know, put myself paired with our president or something like that. But um, so we want to make sure people at all levels are getting mentorship. And so even the 18 year engineer can have a mentor. And so they kind of tell us, tell the committee what they're looking for to get out of the program. And then the committee looks at that and tries to move all the parts and pieces around um, to get people what they need. So that's awesome. Yeah. And we, we try to keep it simple. Fill out your Google form, committee looks at, pairs you, off you go, have fun. We give them a little bit of budget to have lunch or whatever. Um, we do a speed mentoring event once a year, kind of fun to get everybody connected. And then we we also do a mid-year event, which changes every year. Um, just It's open to everybody, even if they didn't participate in the program that year, just to give everybody a little, little taste of mentorship. So it's been really good. How, how many people, since it's on a voluntary basis, like how many... How is, is it a large percentage of the office that want to participate? Yeah, so we're about 100 people total across all five offices. And I'd say on the order of 40 people participate every year. That's so excellent. Yeah, it's really great. Very cool. Good job on that. Thanks. <laughs> Very happy. Very happy. Yeah, it sounds really cool. It's, uh, yeah, it's for those people that don't, that, that want help but can't get it or they don't have the personalities uh, per se to, you know, to go get it. And I think... Yeah, that's 40 people that uh, volunteered out of basically half the firm uh, and volunteer. So it's it's something that they actually wanted and that's actually helping them out. So I think that's uh, that's awesome. And uh, Chris, let's end off here. Do you have any final piece of uh, career advice for structural engineers out there? Yes, I think if I was to boil it down to one phrase, it would be invest in yourself. If if you like your profession, if you love your profession, if you want to be the best at it that you can be, if you want to get the most out of it, you have to invest in yourself. Go get that extra technical education, build relationships, work on your leadership and communication skills. It might mean leaving your desk. <laughs> it might, it might. But you'd be surprised that the more tools you put in your tool belt, how many more things you can do. It makes you more valuable to your firm. It makes you more valuable to this industry. And it makes it, I believe it makes you feel more, more fulfilled as an engineer and as a person. So you have to invest in yourself, find what you're passionate about and go get the information. Thanks Solid so much, advice. Krista. Yeah. yeah thank you. 
great advice. And uh, yeah, thanks again for for sharing with us uh, your experiences and uh, your experience at Seahawk uh, too. And uh, hopefully people can find their passion and, and get involved in their organizations or whatever they're they're interested in to, to get out there and build those skills. So thanks again. Thank you. I have to thank thanks, you. Krista. Thank you. I have to thank you both for doing this because I really think what you're doing um, brings exposure to our industry and um, it's invaluable. So I really appreciate your time and your willingness to, to host these podcasts and interviews and, and to make them available to everybody. So much appreciated. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We'd love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. To leave them, please visit structuralengineeringchannel.com. There you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, which is episode number 93, as well as any links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, we wish you the best in all of your structural engineering endeavors.